Well, this is John, and this is Art Quest Episode 4. With this particular video, uh, I've sped it up two times. I wanted to talk real quickly about a couple of different things before we jump into this. I did initially record this as I was working, but uh, the narration as I was working, I was trying to talk and work at the same time, and I just don't think I'm capable of doing that. So I elected to just mute my original narration and work uh, just in silence and narrate later like I am now. Uh, in this particular video, I wanted to kind of go over can you photo bash in Clip Studio Paint? Uh, I'm not a big fan of photo bashing. I used to do it a lot and I've kind of, as I've rediscovered what I want my style to be, kind of drifted away from this, but it is a very useful and very important skill to have. It's all over the place in the concept art industry, particularly for games and films, as far as production art is concerned. And so it's definitely something good to know how to do. You can also achieve some really great results very quickly. So I'm bringing up this uh, website here. It's called photobash.org. And I'm bringing this up here because I think it's really important to know what kind of photos to use. And this website, photobash.org, and I'm not sponsored or anything by them, I just think they offer a really great product at a fair price. They have a lot of royalty, well, you pay for it, so you, you buy photo packs, and some of these packs are massive, like 200 to 500 photos, some of them are 100 photos, and the price reflects that. But they cover a lot of different, uh, different subjects. You can see a lot of environments, uh, vehicles, uh, textures like this blood splatter here um, anything you could think of where you would need to have photo reference or you plan on implementing these photos in your illustration directly through photo bashing like what I'm gonna do in this video this is a great place to go the biggest thing I see with photo bashing with people that are just trying to learn it is they use the incorrect kind of photo uh, they use really pixelated bad photos so like maybe one Im element in the in the image is like super pixelated and gross and then there's a really nice clean crisp sharp image in the background and it just it just looks bad here you are at least getting high quality high definition photos and you're not going to have that issue and then secondly you're not going to have any royalty issues as well so i use these quite frequently um as you can see here these are ones i plan on using in this illustration i don't end up using all of them because you will see that i uh fail pretty bad at at this because I didn't I didn't do a uh, a uh, a thumbnail before this and and for that it, this image ends up not being that great and pretty lazy which tends to be my tendency when I photo bash um, but yeah I think photobash.org is a great place to get photo reference um, and not worry about stealing someone's photo and along with that you get high quality images so with that uh, I use this image here as kind of the base and then I sort of manipulate it and uh, paint over it it's not really anything special um, I just kinda wanted to see, use this as an experiment I think in another video maybe I'll try and kind of think through an image a little better and maybe mix a little bit of 3D in if I can if I can but this was more just to see can it can it bash can it photo bash can I drop photos in and achieve an effect or a look similar to what I would get in Photoshop and while I feel that this software is not I want to be honest it's not designed for this per, uh, use for this purpose it's ob it obviously can be done in it and um, I I don't know if I think I think Photoshop wins out here on this one as far as ease of photo bashing. M that's mostly because of a color match a tool that you have in Photoshop that is just non-existent here. You have to sort of manipulate hues and saturations and luminosity on your own and just kind of match things by eye, which is a pain. Whereas with with Photoshop, it had a color match, and you could, for instance, select the background layer and have the colors of the character match the background layer and then adjust what level 
you wanted the colors to be of the background layer and of the original colors of let's say the foreground character which is you're, you're trying to match so you get like a good blending of colors and oftentimes what that does is it makes the the character or whatever it is you're trying to color match like fit the overall scene a lot better and you can't really do that very well in clip studio you end up having to do um blending modes and color overlays and again hue adjustments and all these sorts of things and it, it definitely becomes more tedious if you have for instance like the lighting is right between these two images but the colors are off and you need to like make them cohesive because let's say one is like super bright day and the other one's like a cloudy day and it's like well i gotta make these things work and um the color match tool in photoshop wasn't the best at it but it, it got you in the in the right ballpark whereas this doesn't even get you in the ballpark so there is that other than that it is obviously possible once you get the images collaged uh together like what I'm trying to do here. I, I generally try and if I'm going to do pure photo bash, it's not on top of a 3D model or anything like that. I sort of put the, the images in, um, do masks, masking and all that kind of stuff, color, like feather the edges and blends, and try and make the images blend together so it looks like originally one image. And you can see here where I make my first mistake, and I, I see this a lot, people would generally just go ahead with this. I wanted to put like this church building in there kind of jutting out of the rocks and then going over the cliff and back on top in the flat area and I realized that the perspective was off so the viewer here is on the edge of this cliff looking down in this river and they are eye level they'd be eye level with this church and it's like looking the perspective is just not right and it's just not working you wouldn't see that church from those angles and so it's just not going to work i end up tossing it all together and just going with a natural environment with some boats in there because i just could not make any of the references reference images i uh gathered work so that was a bummer uh, and i try a couple different things here um i try putting in uh from a different angle can i make it higher can none of it works and then i tried using a uh, image from a castle and i don't get it to work so instead here i just decide well i'll just work ahead and put my characters in place one thing to note and maybe i'll do an episode on perspective that would be very helpful i'm sure uh you kind of want to have all your characters on the same plane you want to have their heads crossing the horizon or you want to have the same parts of their bodies cross the horizon. So if all of these guys are standing roughly on the same plane, they're at the same height, same level, and all their all their heads, all their bodies need to pass the horizon line at the same point um, in relation to the viewer. It doesn't matter what size they are, if their if the same parts of their body, it could be their mid torso, it could be their knees, it can be their feet, it doesn't matter, as long as everyone's body, no matter their size, passes through the horizon at the same point, they're going to look right as far as you place them in the environment. Now, if they're higher or lower, obviously there's different methods for taking that into account, which I'm not going to get into here, that's a video for another day, but you want to make sure, generally, as a easy rule of thumb if everyone's on the same plane their bodies need to pass through the horizon line at the same level so again still trying to make this uh viking church structure work and it's not gonna work and it's what i get for not doing a thumbnail the image turned out okay i'm not super happy with it but i think it's just because i don't feel like i'm very good at photo bashing um it's just, I've just discovered it's not really my thing, but um, I'm able to somewhat make this work. It's just not my style. I know that this is like really popular, for instance, like The Last of Us concept art has, and marketing art uses this a lot. Um, a lot of films, you know, you got A. Tanzana and Mache Kuchara who use this technique brilliantly, and I'm... I'm, it's just not my thing 
and I'm, I think that's okay. Um, it means I can't probably accept certain jobs where they need a super high quality as far as like a matte painted look, which is a really good general application of this technique, but that's okay. I don't know if I'm really interested in doing that. And that's part of me doing this kind of art quest, art journey, is to figure out what it is that I like, what's my style, what am I into, what am I good at, what am I not good at. So I think having a good inventory of those skills and those things will go a long way in uh, making me a better artist. And I think if you do that too, you will be too. So then I had the bright idea here that this uh, castle gate would be cool if it looked like it was built out of the cliff. And again, just not working. It wasn't going to work. I didn't like the way it looked. Oh, excuse me. I'm tired. <laughs> it just wasn't going to work. The perspective, again, is wrong. And so then I found this cool waterfall picture from my photos. And again, every single one of these photos is from photobash.org. So I have... 100% royalties for them uh, to use them however I want and that's absolutely cool absolutely great so I kind of try and put it in place I originally thought maybe it'd be cool if the waterfall was coming off those cliffs there but then thinking about it I realized that um, where's that water coming from I did not indicate any water on the upper level and I didn't feel like painting it but Regardless, I mask it out, and I pretty much end up using those colors and everything as like a, a mist um, that's kind of hanging out in this valley almost, I guess. I realized that it, that would work really well, and that's, that's another aspect of photo bashing that I think a lot of people miss, myself included, is using photographs in an a unexpected way, and that's how you end up being creative with them um it's not just like oh this is a good rock texture so i'm going to put it on the rock it's or this is a good like mechanical thing so i'm going to use it for this it's like can i take the mechanical thing and like make an interesting interesting building out of it or can i take this uh photo of a jet engine and turn it into like a gun or an interesting piece of armor or something like that it's not just like, well, here's a, a jet engine photo and I'm sticking it on a jet. I mean, that works, but it's not as interesting. So I think that's how you make interesting uh, bits of art. So here I'm just trying to, like I said earlier, there's no color matching. So I want there to be more blues in these characters because they're standing in the shade and as you can see the snow and ice they're standing on is blue which is generally what happens with snow when it's in the shade or in shadow and so i feel like the these guys would look rather blue themselves and uh i have to achieve that manually whereas in photoshop it's just like select the guy and then you select the layer of the background and you'd say color match and then I could just use a slider and adjust how much of the guys the character's original color do I want how much color do I want to show uh, show through of the background and then I can paint over the top of it that way and it works great but that's where Photoshop has this beat and it's very for photo for photo bashing it's a very underrated um, tool that I think a lot of people miss and you're missing out if you're not using that in Photoshop. I, I was definitely feeling like I was missing that ability here. So here I'm just clipping these colors to the layers below, this blue color. And I'm going to use, I'm going to merge them to the character layers so that their colors are sort of uh, correct. And then I screw up the background here. <laughs> Done, decided not to touch that. But um, yeah. Clip Studio Paint kept wanting to uh, save my <laughs> progress here in case of crashing, which was, I guess, nice, but at the same, kind of, same time, it always kind of chooses to do it at inopportune times. I think it's just a setting I need to change. Um, but as you can see, it's already starting to look semi-interesting here, and really all I do over this is I go over it with my textured brushes, in this case my go-to default gouache brushes you see me using here and I and 
these textured oil paint brushes and I just try and like paint over the surface kind of move some paint around uh, blend some edges create some lost edges because sometimes what happens in photographs is uh, that you don't notice it when you're looking at a photograph but if a painting lacks it it doesn't to me look right and that's lost edges so lost edges is like maybe the edge of the boat like disappears into the fog or the rock disappears into the snow or there's like soft edges that um, you're simulating what the eye sees it's not a hundred percent what you actually see but it's an artistic approximation I guess of what the eye sees and that's what you're trying to simulate and so you kind of have to go through and kind of get rid of that grainy photo texture of everything while still keeping the spirit of that like rocky texture or whatever it is that you're looking at which can be tricky so here I'm just adding more snow in places using uh, local colors to try and get that and then I realize I'm painting over a spot that's going to be covered anyways but regardless I just go through and I just try and like smooth things out and just give it a painterly kind of once over because leaving it just as a collaged image might look okay for I guess a, a matte painting but that's again not necessarily what I'm trying to do here I still want it to look somewhat painterly kind of like oh it's it looks photo real but when you look at it closely you see like brush strokes and you're like ah it's painted but is it painted that's kind of my goal and then I'm, I end up just kind of simplifying a lot of these rocks because uh, you just don't need that much detail back there um, where this kind of snowy slope is. There's just no need for that. Um, I just kind of simplify a lot of the stuff to single color or like two colors, so like a darker bluish brown um, on the shadow side of these rocks here, which almost turns gray. And then kind of like a, a more solid color. Really, I think I end up just making these background rocks and snow like there's three values there whereas obviously the values in the foreground here on the rocks and the water and the snow and the characters is um, it's more gradation there's more uh, variation and value and color there but the background far background you don't need that and with that technique you're sort of simulating what's called atmospheric perspective which is a good little nifty trick as things go back into space they lose detail and they become less saturated and they sort of gain the color of the sky as you move further back and you can kind of see this in real life when you look at it but as a, a painter you're sort of in my opinion you do well you would do well to exaggerate that effect uh, just slightly and you'll obtain some nice atmospheric perspective where it looks like those buildings or those mountains or trees or whatever it is you're painting are kind of receding into the distance because you don't have any maybe hard vanishing point lines or something to kind of distinguish that there is distance between point A and point B I guess so again here I'm just kind of going through painting uh, more snow I felt like it, this area just needed whole thing just needed more snow everywhere because I was stitching together a lot of disparate images into a single one and you're just trying to make it look cohesive like everything fits in the same environment plus it gives everything a slightly more painterly uh, look I think it'd probably be beneficial if I made a video too on making your own brushes in Clip Studio I'm still kind of experimenting with that and quite honestly I've been fairly happy with um, the default brushes but I noticed in the zombie painting and in this painting there are certain brushes where I was like man I wish I had something that was more textured and maybe didn't blend in with the colors underneath underneath quite as easily and I think the only solution to that is to just make my own brushes because I searched on the the uh, clip studio sort of downloads that you can get like people have like a marketplace where you can download stuff for free or you can purchase uh, downloads of brushes and textures and things like that and while there's some good stuff on there that I have used and I still have in my toolbox here on Clip Studio uh, 
I don't particularly like them at the end of the day. So I think I'm just better off figuring out how to make brushes that I will like. Yeah, so here I'm just, again, adding some foliage, and I, I think all this stuff's covered by those characters anyways, but sometimes it's useful to have the area underneath those characters painted out so that it, isn't, it looks more natural, like stuff is uh, disappearing behind the characters. You don't have, like, weird lines that stop right at the edge of the character. That always bothers me in my paintings when I have that or my drawings it's like very clear uh, I didn't draw through or something like that so at least this way because I have I can work in layers I'm definitely drawing through and here I'm just trying to like use I'm using actually an ink brush um, trying to simulate like the reflections in water and ice, icy water and don't know how successful I'm at. I'm still struggle with water, um, mostly because it's just so weird, and then getting the reflections down right and everything is just bizarre. And then water like this, where it's flowing, you know, it's not a perfectly still mirrored surface, so. And again, you can see up on the top part where the snowy ridge is, where I simplified those colors. It it makes everything look a heck of a lot more painterly. And I think I probably could have pushed the painterliness of the cliff rocks a little more, but I just got lazy. And again, this was just an experiment in um, can Clip Studio do this? How effective can I be in using this technique? And again, I'll preface it by saying I, I'm not very effective at this te technique I feel in Photoshop. So uh, it's, for me, this is definitely challenging. And I think this is why for my Subscribestar supporters, if which I don't have any yet, but if you're interested in doing that, let me try and sell you on that. So I want to have at least one video a month where it's a private video for subscribe star supporters only and I'm thinking this month for the first one it's going to be texture cubes texture cubes or spheres I'm not sure exactly which way I want to go I did both of those in art school at the Academy of Art and I found them to be while boring very good exercises in acquainting yourself with a painting program uh, and learning to paint certain textures in that painting program that carry over into other things. So like if I know how to paint wood on a cube or a sphere, then it's not a hard thing to paint wood on a table or to, to make it look like a real wooden table or a tree or anything like that. Same with like rock or metal or anything like that. And then if I, for instance, can take a shiny piece of metal and put it in like in a photograph and then try and make it look like objects are reflecting on the sphere. That, that's also an, ex, an insanely good bit of practice there as well. So here I'm just adding more of this mist with a pencil brush. I like the pencil brushes in this program and they work well as like this sort of misty when you when you're painting kind of like a spongy textured uh, effect on your painted surface so quite happy with that and I think I just couldn't get these rocks right which was kind of the annoying part so then I just go through with these guys I could have Ideally, what I would do with these guys is I'd probably mix and match different parts to get like different poses and more variation in look and armor because these guys are just like reenactors in costumes and they're kind of bland. And I probably could have mixed and matched different guys' body parts to make like a new character, which would have made for a more interesting thing. But I was just pressed for time 
at this point, and I kind of just wanted to get this done. And this, this for me tends to be the problem with photo bashing is I have a tendency to go in not planning, and then when I don't plan, I lose interest, and when I lose interest, I end up just like rushing to get it done, and then I end up with a subpar image, and that's probably why I'm not the best at this method. But whatever, it still looks okay. <laughs> it's not the worst thing I've ever painted. If you want to see some horrible things, I think I deleted them all. I had some horrible paintings from like 2012 that were just when I was starting out, and they were just awful. So same thing here. I just sort of um, put this guy in and uh, make sure. So again here too, I'd like to note that I picked these specific characters from my reference photos and photo bash files simply because the lighting was correct on them. So for instance, my lighting is coming from off screen behind us on the right and I needed to pick guys that had that same lighting scheme or could be flipped and rotated to have that lighting scheme. And so that's what I did here. Probably the laziest part of this whole thing was this front guy here. Probably could have painted over him a lot more, but I, again, just got bored and tired of this image already. And I wanted to move on and just be done with it. So I ended up taking a similar hard round brush, um, reducing the spacing of it to get the studs in his armor because I kind of painted them out because I was trying to add a painted effect to it and um, it's super weird to think that like you input this photo and then you paint over it and then you repaint those details back in it seems like kind of useless but at the same time it's there's a reason for it I guess I can't exactly explain but you're using these photos as like a as a guide I guess you know to making your new image and again I think I would have added or removed components from these guys if I had more interest or if this was a client piece and I can't afford to lose interest and get bored with it then I would have spent more time really designing these characters out and and bashing photo bashing specific elements of their costumes rather than just leaving them as they are I mean they work there are people in medieval costumes and it works for my scene, but could have been a lot better. So anyways, I'm just trying to get the final color look, I add an unsharpened mask to it, which I'm kind of on the fence whether or not that is a good idea or not. I think in another one, I'm, I did it on the zombie painting and I did it on this one. And it's kind of a holdover from Photoshop days, and I don't think, I honestly didn't like, eventually like the way it looked in my Photoshop paintings. And I'm just, but it's a habit I haven't been able to get rid of, and I just do it for some reason, and I don't know why. I need to stop, though. I need help. <laughs> I need help. I'm addicted to unsharpened mask. I know it's wrong, and I shouldn't use it, but I do anyways. Um, but anyways, I wanted to thank you guys for watching. We're getting towards the end here. And, uh, again, if you want to support the channel, you appreciate what I do. And for some reason you find value in what I do, uh, support me on Subscribestar. Link will be in the description. My portfolio site is johntorres.art. And, uh, I have a Facebook page for my art and a Twitter page as well. So all that will be linked in the video description. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to let the video finish out. And, uh... Hope you have a good day or evening, whatever time it is that you're watching this at. Keep painting, and hopefully maybe together we'll all become better artists. That's my goal, at least. Because I suck. <laughs> Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next video.